long time ago, it struck me one day. God must have made this church thing pretty basic and simple. Because by no imagination did Jesus go into the Garden of Gethsemane and fall down the night before he betrayed fall down his face to the ground. The Bible says but strong, strong crying in tears he called out to the Father. Father, he was possible. Let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thy will be done. That was one of the most difficult and moving thing that ever took place in this <laughs> okay thank you there's no way in the world that the father let the son go through all of this and then make it so difficult how we ought to live, what we ought to do. It has to be pretty simple. The Bible says that Jesus just before his death pleaded with God, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. The Hebrew writer says that Jesus, in, with strong crying and tears, called out to him who was able to deliver him. But God, God believes that your salvation is important enough. He loves you enough to allow his son to go through the suffering that he went through Bible says that the disciples came together to break bread. I think probably it's important enough that maybe we ought to follow that example. Uh, I've gone to three different congregations in recent weeks and the most important thing I believe and I did there was one church that the first thing that happened was they communed the disciples met together and came together for the express purpose of breaking bread it is so very important that when we commune, we remember Jesus' suffering. We remember that bread that reminds us of his suffering. This reminds me of 
the suffering that Jesus went through. I remember that. I concentrate on that. Take the cup. This cup represents the blood that was shed for me. That shedding of the blood was a big deal. We need to partake of it and we need to think about Jesus' suffering. So communing is one of the most important things that we as disciples do. We ought to go through whatever is important, whatever is, uh, equips us to commune. Christ died for me. Christ died for me. With strong crying and tears, the scripture says. He cried out to him who was able to save. But he said to him, no son, you endure this. And he did, praise God. We have no hope except for that. Point is, this communion thing is a very important thing. Jesus one on one occasion made this statement. He said, My father I'm sorry. When I became a Christian, I took that very seriously. Uh, I had a son that was brand new and, and I was working in New York at the time and I did not want my son to grow up around the heathens that I worked with and uh, on the pipeline. So I came home and decided not to go back to New York. But I was going to take raising my son very carefully. When we moved back, my grandmother, uh, who loved me dearly, we, are, we moved very close to her, and she started bringing over goodies and so on. And uh, one day she said, David, would you do a favor for me? And I said, well, what is it? She says, they're having a meeting down in Caldwell. And uh, I grew up down close to there. And I'd just be so happy if my good son and his pretty wife would go down and, and there and I'd like for them to, for, I want to go down. Okay. And he said, came back and said, I'd be very proud if my uh, husband or my grandson and his pretty wife would go in 
one time on the inside. And I said, yeah, we'll do that. So we went in. And uh, Fred Dennis was preaching. And uh, we started there and went the first night and wanted to go back the second night. Did the second night, the third night. Grandma uh, leaned over to me and said, why don't you go forward? And I wanted to. I turned to D.D., let's go. D put her head down, did nothing. I said, come on, let's go. She shook her head. Grandma, at that point, said to me, well, if she wants to go to hell, just let her. <laughs> Dee was a Jehovah's Witness. I had promised her father when I asked him that, uh, about marrying her, I had promised him that I would not uh, do, uh, do anything to stop her from being a Jehovah's Witness as she was at that time. Uh, so, the next night, it ended, the meeting ended. I put in a terrible, miserable time uh, the week after that, and uh, Dee and I talked about it and prayed about it, and finally she agreed that we'd follow him down where he was in a meeting in West Virginia. We went down there and we were baptized in Christ. Went home that night and uh, didn't go to church on uh, that night. Between then and the following week, I decided I ought to go to church and she did too. And started going regularly. Uh, we took things very seriously. And I learned something, something came to me. I believe that it's extremely important for me to try to get other people to go uh, and listen to the gospel and be saved. Give me that drink, will you please? Oh, it's here. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse me. Hmm. Thank you. So we took it seriously. And uh, I had a friend that asked me to go with him to Dresden, Ohio. His sister was married to the mayor of Dresden. So we went there, and uh, Red and I, and I felt compelled to, to bring up the subject of being saved. So I made the statement that uh, I was very concerned. I felt that uh, we were obligated to obey the gospel. And the Bible said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he who does not believe shall be condemned. And the mayor looked at me and said, that's not so. I said, yes. He, uh, he said, I said, it's in the Bible. He said, where? Uh, I'm not sure. And he said, his wife, get the Bible. He brought the Bible out there, and I started looking. They started laughing, making fun. I thumbed and looked and looked and looked, and they laughed and laughed and had a terrible time at my expense. So I made a, a decision at that point. I was going to find out where the Bible said that. 
I was going to learn. So that started my study of the scripture. I looked for opportunities. We found out that there was uh, three different places we could go where they had Bible study. One uh, on one day and one the next, another three times. So we started doing that and did that for a long time, trying to learn, trying to learn. Started learning, started learning. Still believing that we should encourage people to be saved. I started with my friends. There's a meeting going to take place at Byesville. Dee and I got uh, 22 or three people promised to uh, come to the meeting. First night we sat there and said, well, we can't sit with everybody. And uh, said, well, we'll just do the best we can. Uh, not a soul sewed up. Not a, we had 12, 20, 20, 20 promises, and not a one showed up. So I told Dee, I guess our friends are all liars. So we grieved about that. But I started, I felt very seriously that we needed to lead people to obey the gospel. We went to work, trying it, trying. Finally got people we baptized 30 people before I started preaching. We led, led in all of our family that we could and, and uh, our friends, baptized some of our friends. My brothers and sisters baptized all of them. But anyway, we baptized 30 people. I felt it was very important. I still feel it's very important. I think that when we become a Christian, we should as quick as we could, can, we should try to lead our fa family and friends to obey the gospel. And I worked at that, worked at that. Uh, finally, one day, the preacher at Bysville, where we at stop nine, where we were going to church, the preacher asked me if I would, he was going to be gone on one evening and asked if, if I would take up the time that night. And I said, I don't think I know enough to take up all of the time. I'll take up half of it if we can get somebody else to take up half of it. So Glenn said he would, and the night rolled around this time, and I looked around, and I couldn't find him any place. I finally had a, had a outside toilet. I looked at him, he's back there, with his hands up on the wall, up chucking, throwing up. And so he tried, and he wasn't going to, and I insisted he do it. And he said, well, he'd, he'd try. So I got up and took about five minutes, and he was done. And I had all the rest of the time to take up. It was a terrible experience. I decided then and there that I didn't want to take up any more time. I would never do that again. Time went on. I was studying and learning. And uh, the preacher said he wanted to go on again and want to know if I would preach on Sunday night. 
So I started and I studied and studied and studied. And on Sunday night, I preached uh, the sin of neglect. When I was done, somebody came up to me and said, would you preach, go to Colwell? I'll check with the elders down there. Would, if, if it's okay with them, would you come down there and preach that same thing? And uh, I agreed to. Before we left the building, somebody else came up. There's another little town up to close. Can't think of where it was now. But he asked me if I'd come there and preach that same thing. And I said I would. I was amazed, and I did, both places. And uh, time went on. I started going different places and preaching over Sunday, little places out in the sticks. And I'd preach, and I, one of those places was Crumb Ridge in Noble County. So I went there and preached. They wanted me to come down one time every month. And I did that for a while. One day, they, I went down on uh, that, and he said, wanted me to come down to Crum Ridge and preach in a meeting, preach a meeting. So I uh, said, yeah, well, I'd come one, uh, just one week. So I worked, I got enough sermons for one week went down, started preaching that, down there at that meeting, and for the, about the end of the week, had baptized several people. The elders asked me, would you stay over to Wednesday night and pre preach that long? And I was scared to death. I said, yeah, I would. I meant I had to get a different sermon. I didn't have enough sermons preach that, uh, that much, but I did. They carried it over for three weeks. I had to get it every day, get another sermon ready. To baptize, I can't remember how now, right now how many, but uh, when it was over, good. Then uh, somebody came and asked me if I'd come and preach in a meeting at uh, wherever it was. And I said, yeah. And I went to work and decided to do that. So about a month later, I went down there for that meeting. And uh, at that meeting, when I I bunch of cars out there and out in the field, building, couldn't get everybody in the building. And I didn't know what, didn't know what to think. They had an outside toilet out in the back. I went out on that toilet and uh, I uh, went in there and I started praying and crying and God, what's going on? What's going on? I didn't, I was scared to death. So I decided, God, if, if, if they want me to preach like that, uh, 
I must couldn't understand it. So I started crying. And I came to the conclusion in that toilet, God had to be behind that. It had to be God. So I preached that meeting, baptized a lot of people. But I didn't want to preach. I liked my life the way it was, preaching on Sundays, studying the, with people, baptizing people, but I did not want to preach. Other preachers, there was Harley ba Bankus, Harley, ba Harley Bankus had been in Williamstown to try to get a congregation started in the early 30s. <laughs> Nothing happened, didn't get it started. That came later. But Harley Bankus was on me heavy. I had the ability, I was having great results, You got to do it. I didn't want to. Finally, one night, at that point, I had gone to uh, Cambridge. Uh, I had two people to baptize, so I went there and asked the preacher to use their building. He said, would you stop and talk with me after you get done? I said, okay. So I baptized uh, a woman and their daughter, grown daughter. And I stopped. And he said, they're looking for a preacher, a full-time preacher at Wadsworth. They called me. And asked me if I knew anybody. I told them about you and told them that you would come up there and preach on Sunday. I had no intentions of preaching up there. I went up, preached, and uh, there was three different places tried to get me to locate. I did not want to. I did not want to preach full time. I thought I was doing fine, preaching on Sundays, different times, little, little places around. They asked me to preach there. I, I told them no. Within a two or three weeks, there was three different places. One of them was Coshocton, Ohio. And I walked one night on the house, could walk clear around it on the inside. I paced, cried pleaded with God. So I went to Coshocton and uh, two elders there talked with me and I started preaching. That's how it all started. And I moved to Coshocton and preached there for seven years before I came down here. Interesting thing about down here, I didn't want to come to West Virginia. So we came down one Wednesday night, Fred Dennis, who had baptized me, had been preaching here. And uh, so I came down and 
Dee and I got in the car to go home. And as we pulled away from the building, I said, I know one thing, I'm not going to come to West Virginia. And she said, I, I agree with you. So I went back and I told Kishokton I was going to leave. And uh, she said, uh, it's time for me again, close to time for me to leave. I had three different places. Uh, one, one of them was Columbus. And then I did not want to, my kids growing up in the city like that. So one day I thought, well, I've got to make a decision. And uh, I said, I, for some reason, I think we ought to go to West Virginia. And I said, I don't want to. And Dee started crying. She said, I felt the same way. We ought to maybe go to West Virginia. So we came to West Virginia. Important. Preaching the gospel is important. Sharing your faith is important. Every one of you who's a Christian, uh, you need to decide to lead people to Christ. You have friends, you have relatives, you have kids, you have people who are without God and without hope in this world. You need to, you need to be talking to people about the gospel. I'm not saying you need to preach. I'm saying that you need to share the gospel with people. Pray God will bless you and guide you. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to be able, I've got to make a decision about this. Uh, I am limited and that's a fact. Can I change that? I don't know. I know that I'm not going to be uh, preaching and s trying and not able to do a, a proper job if I need to quit if that's God's will I'll accept that if, uh, if, if I need to quit then I'll do that I am hindered, that's a fact. I don't want to be the burden that I am trying to preach. Now, I have to solve that problem or I have to do something else. God will lead me. Pray for me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Father, your will be done always in all things. Use me as seems best in your sight. Your will be done, O oh God. Not my will that your will be done, dear Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father, thank you for Dave, and thank you for, uh, thank you for the way that his life has been uh, sharing your faith, sharing his faith in you. And, uh, we just pray that you would be especially near to him at this point in his life, and, and use your spirit to care and encourage him. 
pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Before you leave today, uh, over here, uh, Glenn and Betty Moore uh, have been, I think everybody knows them. Everybody knows them over here. He's a guy in a sling. He had, he got in a fight and he lost. <laughs> no, he had some surgery a, couple, a week or so ago. And their daughter, Annie, is with them today. She lives up in Cambridge. Uh, they would like to be recognized as members of this congregation. Pray on. So they asked me what you needed to do to do that. And I said, well, you just did it. You said you wanted to be uh, members here. So if you don't know them, be sure they're great people, very good people.